Good afternoon. It is Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and it's been a little bit of a crazy morning. This morning, um, normally every other week, my husband has chemotherapy. This week, it's put on hold because his white count was a little, well, very low. So. <laughs> He got one of those lovely injections that help boost your white cells. So we'll see if he gets that lovely bone pain that comes with it. But um, our physician is actually at an education retreat. So one of the other physicians stepped in. We saw the uh, PA today, the second time we've seen the PA, the first time. Um, they canceled because the white count was so low. So the second time they canceled. So I was teasing her. It's her fault. And uh, <laughs> she knows I'm kidding. So anyway, he's going to take a little bit of a break. And then we'll get back into the chemo. As usual, once those white counts have come up. So that changed my plans. Um, I had planned to go to Hobby Lobby, which is our new store. It just opened recently um, because I was I'm going to purchase some yarn for a project I want to do for myself not for anything else but something I want to do for myself and um, so it changed a little bit I'll go tomorrow instead um, simply because we don't want him around people because of how low his white count is so I haven't really gotten anything done other than a bunch of washcloths. Um, did a little bit on uh, the Ross hat. I'm um, in the last round. That'll be finished today. Haven't got the uh, luck of the draw number three updated. That probably won't happen till this week for both weeks. Just running by. Haven't got the uh, birth mal make along, birth month make along. Haven't got that updated. No, I've been doing other things, crazy things. A lot of it dealing with the prayer shawl um, ministry. Yesterday was our day for us to count all the items and you know, send some things out to some of the different areas, which I dropped those off this morning at the breast center. We provide shawls and wraps because those women who have to see the doctor after their mammograms because of a spot or because it's a follow-up, you know, because they've had breast cancer before, um, they have to go into a waiting room, and it's really chilly in the waiting room year-round. So we provide wraps and, and uh, shawls for them to wrap around themselves. Because as you know, the little cape they give you to <laughs> isn't very warm. <laughs> Any woman that's had a uh, mammogram knows that. But, um, so I dropped those off this morning before we left. And uh, that basically is it yesterday had an interview with a reporter um, to talk about the issues with the yarn shortages which basically comes down to right now um, from all my sources that I've called and talked to distributors, dealers, those kind of things is all delivery the shipping, the delivery um, everyone is so far behind that it's crazy so <laughs> That's the main issue with that. I did start another washcloth. And this one is, I have a friend who calls these porcupines. And what it is, is you start knitting your washcloth. And then when you get close to the middle, then you add in your scrubby yarn. And just do a scrubby section. That's the porcupine. And then you go back to the cotton. So I always find that kind of funny. It, that's what she calls it, is porcupine. So today's is going to be a real short one. Uh, I, 
I have got the bags cut that I'm going to be sewing this week. Of course, now I have a little more time to be able to get them done. With the exception of I have things to do tomorrow, so they probably won't get sewn until Thursday. Up by Friday, hopefully. But, um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And then, uh, then we'll move on. I did watch my uh, J movie, so I'll be coming out with that video a little bit later. And I will also be coming out with the uh, shout outs that I have a little bit later too in this week. And trying to catch up on a lot of things. <laughs> Sleep is one of them. <laughs> Alright, are you ready for a little water intonation? Like I said, it's going to be a real short one today. Escaped Zoo Bobcat on the Loose in Ontario. Police and the owners of an Ontario zoo are asking members of the public to keep an eye out for an escaped bobcat believed to have been released from its enclosure by a vandal. Ontario Provin Provincial, that's a mouthful, police, said owners of the Saunders County Critters Zoo and Sanctuary in North Grenville found an animal outside of its enclosure on Saturday, and a more thorough inspection of the facility on Sunday revealed that a bobcat named Brett Cody was missing. He is friendly, timid with strangers, but cannot survive in the wild, police tweeted. Police said they think someone broke into the zoo and intentionally released the animals. And most likely it was someone, you know, one of those uh, letters that's PETA members or Earth First, Elf, whoever, thinking they're doing a good deed, but honestly they're not doing a good deed when the animal has always been cared for and doesn't know how to survive on, out in the wild. It's not a good deed, folks. Carla and Gary Sanders, the owners of the zoo, said the bobcat does not pose a danger to the public. There is no danger to the public. The danger is for him, as he doesn't know about cars or that water and food aren't served in stainless steel bowls, the couple said in an email to CTV News. He is probably totally terrified. Police are asking for anyone who spots the loose animal to contact officers and call the zoo directly. And there's a little video or a link to the story. Sorry. Loose donkey trots down Rhode Island Road. A driver on a Rhode Island road captured video of an unusual pedestrian wandering in the roadway. A loose donkey. Authorities in Johnstown said that the donkey was first spotted about 7 p.m. Sunday near the border with Scituate, S-C-I-T-U-A-T-E, and was seen again at 8.30 p.m., but police were unable to locate the wandering animal. The city of the Johnston famously dealt with the loose steer that escaped on its way to a slaughterhouse in February. And the animal was on the loose for nearly two months before being recaptured. The city authorities also dealt with the trio of nuisance turkeys that caused traffic hazards for weeks in 2018. Mayor Joseph Polisina said the donkey could prove difficult to growl. He looks like he's in good shape, he's fast. He told the Providence Journal, I'm hoping my animal control people can keep up with him. The next one, the video, is hilarious. Raccoon invades armored vehicle at U.S. Army base. A U.S. Army soldier stationed in Colorado captured video of colleagues scrambling to exit an armored vehicle to get away from a hitchhiking raccoon.
Jossie Chavis, who's stationed at Fort Carson, captured video of the scene that unfolded when a raccoon invaded an armored vehicle known as a Bradley Fighting Vehicle. We were surprised that a raccoon found a way to get inside of Bradley. Chavez told Fox television stations, It's really not common. That's why we were all surprised by it. The video shows soldiers scrambling to exit the video with a raccoon following closely behind. The animal then runs off into the distance. <laughs> and it's a funny video. You know, sometimes you need to also be aware of your surroundings when you're following the directions of GPS. Driver who got stuck on golf course was following GPS. Police in Massachusetts said a man who drove his SUV onto a golf course and became stuck on the sixth hole told officers he had been led astray by his GPS app. You think? The Newton Police Department said officers were called to the sixth hole of the Brayburn County Gol Club golf course about 5 a.m. Wednesday on a report of an SUV stuck in the grass. The driver told police he had dropped off some bread, some friends about 2 a.m. I wonder what they were doing. And was following his ways. GPS, which led him onto the golf course. The man told police the darkness caused him to take a turn too wide and become stuck. Police said the man did not appear to be intoxicated and is not facing any charges. The SUV was removed from its lodging and the golf course was determined to be undamaged. And <laughs> Those golf courses, they cost a lot of money to plan them and execute them and get them all in golfing uh, fitness. I think the moral of the story is, if you're using one of these GPS apps, just keep your eyes on the road. Your eyes won't lie to you. <laughs> Newton Police Lieutenant Bruce Apothecker told WBZ-TV, I think if you saw that you were headed down some sort of a road and it looked like it wasn't going to go anywhere, that you would stop and turn around. Dogs Alarm credited with saving a New York church after fire erupts. A New York woman's German Shepherd is being hailed as a hero by members of a church after he alerted his owner to a late-night fire at the facility. Kim Lewis said she was awakened Sunday morning at her home in Summers, Westchester County, when her four-year-old dog, Bear, started barking loudly. I was awakened by Bear. He had an alarming bark. It was very unusual, Lewis told News 12. I opened the blinds and I saw the church on fire. Lewis called 911 and firefighters from multiple agencies responded to extinguish the flames. Church officials said the fire caused about $50,000 worth of damage, but the building could have been destroyed if Bear hadn't raised the alarm. Bear caught it quick and emergency responders got here quick and they stopped a devastating disaster, church administrator Lisa Wayne told KABC-TV. Five to ten more minutes and it was into the attic. It would have hit the electrical and it would have taken the whole building out. The church, which is preparing to celebrate its 50th anniversary in July, paid tribute to Bear in a Facebook post that dubbed him the best dog in the world. Firefighter said the blaze appears to have been accidental and was caused by an electrical problem. So it saved two issues. Now they know they had the electrical problem and they could get it fixed. Thank you, Bear. Bobcat that sparked school ec evacuation was an escaped house cat.
Officials at a Pennsylvania high school said a bobcat that prompted the building to be evacuated when it was spotted inside turned out to be an escaped house cat. West Scranton High School officials said students were sent home Tuesday morning when security cameras captured what appeared to be a bobcat wandering loose inside the building. Animal control officers agreed the feline appeared to be a bobcat <clears throat> and alerted the state game commission. The animal was captured inside the building and officials quickly discovered it was not a bobcat, but a domest domestic cat breed known as a clouded jack cat. The breed has a silhouette similar to a bobcat. Griffin Pond Animal Shelter scanned the animal for a microchip and identified the male cat as Kakashi, a local pet who had been missing for about three months. Kakashi was reunited with the Johnson family Tuesday afternoon, and I know he was glad to be home. Now, this next one gives me a new factor. <coughs> and I find it rather annoying and alarming that the FDA actually had to put out this warning. FDA, don't eat cicadas if you have seafood allergies. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued a warning for those interested in sampling cuisine containing Brood X, Brood 10, cicadas. Stay away if you're allergic to seafood. The FDA tweeted Wednesday that people with allergies to seafood should steer clear of eating cicadas because of their relation to sea creatures. We have to say it, the FDA tweeted, don't eat cicadas if you're allergic to seafood, as these insects share a family relation to shrimp and lobsters. The brood X cicadas, which emerge every 17 years, surfaced this month in several states, including Pennsylvania, Virginia, Indiana, and Tennessee. The plentiful insects have inspired a number of culinary creations that use the cicadas as a main ingredient. And ooh. Don't eat them. Just don't do it. Don't eat the cicadas. Alright guys, that's it for today. I will see you again soon later in the week with more uh, fun stuff, I guess. I don't know. It should be interesting. So I'll see you guys then. Everybody have a blessed week. And remember to choose kindness and love one another.